Hello and welcome back to our Lion King adventure. And wow, haven't you been busy? You've been so busy today because I've received so much wonderful writing. I'm so thankful um, for all the writing I've received. What I've done is I've taken six sentences from your work and I've put it together to make a whole key stage um, paragraph, our second paragraph of our key stage story. Um, and I've chosen six <laughs> um, children, even though originally I was just going to choose three each day. If you haven't been chosen for today's chunk, um, do not worry, I will be trying to cho choose different people each day. And so everybody who submits work will get a chance to be um, part of our key stage story. And so the children who I've chosen today are um, Josh from year one, Jasmine from year one, Marley from year two, Eloise from year two, Roman from year one, and finishing off with Leon from year two. So thank you for all of your sentences and everyone else um, for all your work too. I've been really, really impressed. So here is our second chunk. Rafiki cracks a fruit and spreads the juice on Simba's head. You can hear the purring from Simba's mummy and daddy. Then Rafiki happily carries Simba proudly to the end of Pride Rock. Carefully and lovingly, he holds Simba with two strong hands. As soon as Rafiki lifts Simba into the light of the sun, the ground below rumbles like thunder. Parrots squawked, monkeys howled and chattered, elephants trumpeted, tramp, 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 and the zebras bleated loudly. Wow, what a great second chunk. We've had two amazing first two paragraphs of our class, um, of our key stage um, story. Our next chunk is, I just can't wait to be king. And this is where Simba and Nala are allowed to explore all the land that the light touches. Um, and they've got to do it under the supervision of Zazu. Um, and so they really want to go off to this elephant graveyard and escape um, Zazu's supervision. And that's what happens in the song. I've got three targets for you again today. We've got our basic simple, and I would like you to take a lot of care over using capital letters for the names of different characters. There are quite a few characters in this scene. Um, so we might mention Mufasa, and um, we've got Simba, we've got Nala, and we've got Zazu. And their names need to always start with a capital letter, just like your name starts with a capital letter. Our second target is to include some speech into our chunk. I'm going to get you to choose a line from the film that either Simba or Zazu or Nala say and include it in your writing. And you're going to draw a little 66 in the sky before this speech to show that the speech has started and a little 99 at the end to show when it's finished. And the last target for today is um, a boom-tastic. You can see there's a boom-tastic. It's going to make your writing and stand out even more. And it's to use some alliteration. Now we've talked about alliteration a lot in year two. And that's where words that are near each other start with the same sound. For example, African animals, the A ah from African and the A ah from animals, it's the same sound, African animals. So let's start with today's chunk. Okay, so this is our next chunk. And as always, we're gonna leave a line um, because we're starting a new paragraph. In this scene, Simba is quite a bit older. So we're gonna to need to start this paragraph by telling our reader that quite a bit of time has passed um, and that you know, Simba's a bit bigger and older. So how am I gonna do that then? Um, I could write days pass, months pass, years pass, that's what I'll do. Years pass, and one day, yeah, I think something like that. Years pass, and one day, Mufasa, Mufasa is Simba's father, I think, 
um, and he gives Simba permission to go out with Nala and go f- and like go for a walk and run outside in the land. Well, I've, I've written Mufasa with a capital M. That's good because our target is to write any names of characters with a capital letter. So years pass and one day Mufasa agrees to let and I'll have to write Simba's name with a capital S, won't I? Now, what does Mufasa let Simba do? Um, he lets Simba go out, let Simba go for a walk, let Simba play, let Simba explore. Yeah, like explore. Um, agrees to let Simba explore the land with... And so we've got... He goes with Nala, doesn't he? And so we're going to write Nala with a capital N... And also with Zazu, reluctantly with Zazu. Um, Zazu's there to keep an eye on them, really. Our next sentence is going to be a sort of a year three target, and that's to include some speech. We've done a little bit of this in year two already, haven't we? Um, So we're going to start off with some speech marks, which look like a little 66 in the sky. And that's going to show our reader that someone started speaking. And I want you to choose a line from the film, maybe, that you can use as speech. So I've chosen, there will never be a king like me, which Simba um, quite cheekily says to Zazu. So there will never be a king like me. I think I'm going to put an exclamation mark here just to show that Simba's getting a bit carried away with himself. Um, so there will never be a king like me, exclamation mark. And then after that, I'll put a little 99 in the sky so you can see that the speech has ended, just like I did 66 at the start of the sentence. So I'll never be a king like me, Simba said. Simba tells, I think. Simba tells Zazu um, this, doesn't he? So Simba tells... So how is Zazu feeling? Um, Annoyed? So Simba tells an annoyed Zazu? Or unimpressed? I like unimpressed. Simba tells an unimpressed Zazu. Yeah, that sounds good. So there'll never be a king like me, Simba tells an unimpressed Zazu. And you might want to add some more speech in your paragraph and maybe how Zazu responds. Um, But I'm going to continue now to our next bit, which is the bit where Nala and Simba escape Zazu's supervision. So Simba and Nala, right, I'm going to use some alliteration now to help um, bring some rhythm to my writing and to describe that moment where Simba and Nala escape from Zazu's supervision. How can I describe how the two friends um, get away from Zazu and they sort of go in between the animals and they sort of run and then they sprint and they, and they manage to get away from him? could use um, twist and turn, both starting with that t sound. So twist and turn away um, from Zazu and manage to to run off to the elephant graveyard. Or they could zig and zag um, away from Zazu. So it'd be three z sound there. Zig and zag away from Zazu. Or they could weave and wind weave and wind that might work um because they sort of go in and out don't they among the animals so they're weaving and winding among the animals and we have alliteration there because we've got the w sound and um, repeating itself in weave and wind hmm i wonder whether we can put in a word before animals um, among the, among the, um, poof, among the African animals. Then we've got the A uh, from African, and we've got the A uh, from animals. Both words starting with the A uh sound and next to each other. Um, so that's alliteration, isn't it? Simba and Nala weave and wind among the African animals and sneak off. Oh, I, I like sneak off. That shows to the reader that. Um, the lion cubs aren't doing what they're supposed to and sneak off to an elephant graveyard 
Mm, how do I spell elephant? I think it's got the f diagraph in it, isn't it? With the P and the H. And grave has a split A diagraph, isn't it? And then we've got yard with the R diagraph. Um, and that was our last sentence from today's chunk. So I'm just going to read over my work. So here we go. Years pass and one day Mufasa agrees to let Simba explore the land of Nala and Zazu. There will never be a king like me, Simba tells an unimpressed Zazu. Simba and Nala weave and wind among the African animals and sneak off to an elephant graveyard. And that was today's chunk. Well done. Don't forget to upload your work onto Class Dojo. See you tomorrow.